Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Shrek Gaming Silicon video, we're going to be discussing rumors concerning NVIDIA's next generation of graphics cards. That's right, there are actually more release dates and performance information that has allegedly been leaked about the next generation of GeForce graphics cards. Now, don't forget, we've had the 10 series now for about two years. However, there have been an awful lot of release dates that have come and gone for these new cards and a lot of, uh, well, information that just has panned, so it turned out to not be true. So in this video, we're going to be going through the updated information we have and then going through what we actually do know about these cards and then trying to give you guys some advice of what's the best option. So I'm going to start things out with the new information. Uh, this comes to us from Tom's Hardware Germany. According to them, I got, um, according to Igor Walsack from the German division of Tom's Hardware, he says that the AIB partners of NVIDIA, that would be MSI and Asus and so on, are currently being briefed about the next generation of GeForce cards. Now, why is that important? Well, a couple of reasons. One, it means that, well, it at least shows that this next generation is coming at some point. And two, it means that this generation of cards is not coming tomorrow. It's most likely not coming in July. It looks like it's going to be August at the earliest, because to be briefed means that they've not started production. So they have to, of course, figure out their own marketing. They have to start actually figuring out how they're going to produce the cards. They have to start actually having a back inventory of these cards and so on and so on. It's not something they can just do tomorrow. The engineers need to actually figure out cooling solutions and figure out custom variants of the cards. It's going to take a while. So that's something that's very important. Secondly, another leak from Tweaktown tells us that these cards is going to be released between August and September. And don't forget, this also ties into another leak from Jensen himself. Jensen's, well, I say leak, a piece of information, excuse me, from Jensen himself, who said that he, uh, when he asked for a hint, he said that the new cards are gonna be a long time from now. So if you say September, that is quite a long time from when he said it at Computex. The only thing that does somewhat take the uh, lust out of those rumors is the rumor from, um, uh, Hot Chips 30. I say rumor and not accurate piece of information because at the Hot Chips 30 conference, uh, Stuart Oberman, who works at NVIDIA, was supposed to give a rundown at the Hot Chips 30 conference, which by the way is a closed, uh, a closed conference. You can't just attend it as a regular member of the public. He was supposed to give a discussion on the next generation GeForce architecture. That was taking place on August the 20th. But since then, his discussion has actually been removed from the website. So one of two things has happened. One, NVIDIA have gotten wind to this and realized that the press has been covering it. But yeah, once the cat's out of the bag, for them to kind of remove that, I don't know if there'll be a point. Or two, they realized that things were just heading behind schedule. Traditionally, however, new GeForce graphics card launches are prior to hot chips. But, and this is the crucial thing, Tweaktown are alleging that these new cards are not going to be replacements necessarily for the 1080. Now I know you're screaming at the screen and saying, what the hell do you mean? Well, these are not going to be cards which are necessarily going to be the 2080 or the 1180s or whatever the hell you're going to be calling them. In fact, these cards could be a thousand to fifteen hundred US dollars. What? <laughs> yeah. That basically means that they're going to be about twice the price, in theory, up to twice the price of a GTX 1080 Ti or Ti or whatever you want to call it at launch, which was about 799 US dollars MSRP. That's a lot of cash. There is also one other piece of information we have concerning the next generation GeForce. Once again, this is not confirmed, but another uh, website, 3D Center, claims that the next generation GeForces will make fundamental changes to how uh, the cards handle clocks frequencies. Now, whether we're referring to the base clock of the GPU, whether we're referring to boost clocks or something entirely different, we're just not quite sure yet. For those unfamiliar with Pascal, it can boost two gigahertz or higher, assuming obviously you've got the uh, heat, heat isn't an issue and all of the other normal caveats. 
So what are we going to be seeing here? Could it possibly go 2.4 gigahertz, 2.5 gigahertz, or is it going to be entirely different? After all, if this architecture is related to uh, Volta, then we can certainly get an inkling of how it's going to operate. But if it's not related to Volta, or they've made some substantial changes which are more focused on gaming compared to Volta, well, you can kind of get where I'm going with this. It's going to be very curious when we finally get that information uh, regarding the clock speeds, because I want to know what video have changed there. I think that could be very curious, and I wonder from the perspective of A-hardcore overclockers and even more casual overclockers whether it's something necessarily that we can control or whether it's just kind of automatic or, or what. What we can take away from this though is the earliest we're going to see these cards is July. The latest we're going to see these cards, assuming there's not another slip, is September. So either way, it's essentially within a two to two and a half to maybe three months time span. So if money isn't an issue and you want to just buy a card, uh, sorry, if money is an issue and you want the best, I would highly suggest waiting until September. At the latest, we should have solid information. What about AMD? Well, yeah, what about AMD? If you're thinking AMD can save you, I've got bad news for you, pal. Navi 10, from what we're hearing from uh, Forbes and other sources, the highest end SKU that they're going to release uh, for Navi 10 is going to put out about the same level of performance as Vega 64. That basically means that they're going to be competing at the GTX 1080 level, but it's going to be at a cheaper price and it's going to put out less heat and it's going to have lower power consumption but it also won't be competing for the bleeding edge you're going to have to wait for navi 20 for that and that is not going to release until 2020 possibly 2021 with it, with navi 10 being released next year possibly even a little later i have a full rundown of that which you can find out in the video description with a separate video so what about performance what about the architecture, Paul? What about that bloody thing? Well, unfortunately, no one knows. <laughs> there is that leak, and I say that with some level of contempt, I admit, concerning the specifications of the uh, 1080, sorry, of the 2080. But the problem I have with that is that no one knows if it's true because A, it was only one source, and B, although other websites reported it and so on, it didn't take much to actually realize that it could just have been Titan V pared down a bit. And I even said so in my initial report. I said, you know, it could have just been that the source was genuine or the source wasn't genuine or whatever, but it was just the best guess scenario of Titan V and just paring it down, cost reducing it for us gamers. <sighs> and yes, Tech Power Up database did actually take these specifications. Their problem with that is that they could have put anything in there. They were just doing it as a placeholder. So they could have put in that this GPU was going to be using EDO RAM. They could have put in that this thing had 2 billion CUDA cores. It could have, they could have said that it uses HBM8. It doesn't matter. It is literally just a placeholder. And here's the thing. What we do know, however, and this is going back to slightly more solid ground, is that most likely we are going to be using the next generation of GeForce on a 12nm FFN, which, by the way, is the same process used in Tesla, uh, sorry, in Titan V and other graphics cards, and also it is um, a pretty much a shoe in for the next generation of GeForce. What we do know about this process is that, of course, it's going to have lower power consumption. You're going to be able to fit on more stuff in the same space. It's cost. It's obviously a shrunk die. Um, sorry, shrunk process compared to that of the 16nm found in the uh, GeForce 10 series. But it's not going to be a significant difference. But still, it is something that Nvidia are going to be most likely leveraging for the next generation of GeForce graphics cards. Speaking of generation and graphics cards, what architecture is it going to be using? <laughs> well, don't forget that Reuters claim it was going to be using Turing. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly what Turing is. However, most likely Turing is going to be Volta, but with some concessions made. Most likely we're going to see the 
removal of certain deep learning uh, functionality. We're going to see perhaps either the removal or the reduction of tensor cores. We're going to see HBM2 go bye-bye, uh, which of course was also found in the Titan V. Most likely that's just not going to be there. It's really expensive. HBM, just for a single stack, can cost 80 or 160, whatever. And so having multiple in there for a, a large amount of memory, for a wide capacity, um, so for a wide memory bus, even the interposer itself is like $25. You can get a couple of GDDR6 memory modules for that. It's just not worth it. So I suspect that that is definitely going to be one of the things we're going to be seeing. As for the number of CUDA cores, no one really knows. If the price for these things is going to be like 1500 bucks, it could be that we see essentially Titan V, but just with the uh, improvements, uh, sorry, the, 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 the um, stuff for deep learning and so on removed, and they really pair it down just for gaming, uh, possibly with some improvements for compute, but really pared down and HBM2 uh, removed, and it goes for GDDR6, and that could be why it costs like 1500 bucks. If not, so therefore it could have almost the same number of CUDA cores, or it could have like, you know, the, the high 3000 mark, like 3840 or something like that. The reason I'm not giving specific numbers here is because it's almost impossible to accurately know. Anything is just a guess. The only thing I can tell you is that if you were to look at previous generations of NVIDIA architectures, if you were to look at, say, the 980 versus the 1080, or you were to see the the uh, the Maxwell Titan versus the GTX 1070, you're looking at the Titan and the 1070 putting out about the same level of performance. The same could be said for the previous generations. In other words, typically NVIDIA do have a rather large performance jump but because we don't necessarily know if uh, Turing is exactly the same architecture just with some concessions made of Volta, it's very difficult to know how the CUDA layout is going to take shape and it really comes down to the pricing there. After all, if you're talking about a card that's like 1500 US dollars, to say that it has more CUDA cores than let's say the 1080, it's like, well duh, of course it does. Memory, however, is almost certainly going to be GDDR6. We do know that the 1080s, the 980s have always used a 256-bit memory bus. And it makes sense that we're going to see GDDR6 used here. For If you're running within the JDEX specifications, which is like 16,000 um, or 18,000 uh, GBPS on the uh, GDDR6 memory with a 256-bit memory bus, you can have 512 to 576 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth with either 8 or 16 gigabytes of memory on the GPU. That's more than enough to power 4K gaming. And so I don't think that that's going to be a particularly big issue. There are, however, a couple of questions when it comes to ray tracing. What we do know about ray tracing is that everyone wants it in the, G in the uh, graphics market, whether that's game developers, whether that's manufacturers of APIs, such as, let's say, DirectX or Vulkan, and of course, GPU manufacturers as well, because it lends itself to better graphics. We've discussed at length and done a full analysis of exactly what ray tracing is. I'll try to remember to link it in the video description. But with Titan V, it has the tensor cores, and we know that Volta can run ray tracing really well on its tensor cores. The problem with that, of course, is that those tensor cores are quite expensive. We also know that tensor cores are not the only way to run ray tracing. It can run on traditional CUDA cores, but albeit not quite as fast. I'm curious to see how NVIDIA are going to get around that, whether we're just going to see a smaller number of tensor cores, whether we're going to see the design of CUDA cores change over the next couple of years, or whether it's going to be something entirely different. No one 100% knows right now. So I've given you a lot of information and some of the reports are conflicting without any question. I think my personal advice right now is there have been no leaks concerning performance. None that are I would consider genuine enough to even slightly warrant to believe. And the same about specifications. There have been nothing that that has been nothing that I'm like you know what? I'm pretty darn convinced that this is genuine. There hasn't even been the, the shrouds that leaked like with the GeForce 10 series. Do you remember that? My personal opinion, however, is that these cards are still not like 
you know, 20 months into the future. I do think that we're going to see them launched around September at the latest. But with that said, as for how much they're going to cost and whether they're going to replace the 10 series, that's just unknown. Therefore, you have two choices. If you are someone who just wants a graphics card right now, and with MSRPs basically being reached with graphics cards, you could just jump on a GTX 1080. But then again, it's possible that this same price, you could get an 1180 or a 2080 in just a couple of months. Frankly, I would suggest waiting. Frankly, I would suggest just saying, you know what? You know, park that cash. And if these cards come out at ridiculous prices, that's, that's fine. I'll just buy the 1080 or whatever I can get my hands on. The only exception is if Bob, your friend, happens to say, you know, I'm going to buy a Titan V graphics card because I'm doing some CAD work and other bits and pieces. Do you want my GTX 1080 for like 200 bucks, dude? I, you know, I, I'm just going to get rid of it on eBay otherwise. In which case, run off uh, with the GPU and, you know, throw the money behind you and just like take it. But other than that, I would probably suggest just waiting. That's just my personal opinion. And you just jumping right on and buying a card now is not the wrong way to go. It's just an opinion. Like, there's no right or wrong way to, to really behave here. As for performance and specifications and frame rate, I think regardless of whether we see a 1080 replacement, so the 2080, or whether we see it as the 2090, or whatever we end up seeing, it's obviously going to be significantly faster than Pascal right now. It's down to your decision, and I know that that's not necessarily advice, but I'm just going to be honest with you all. There's so much conflicting information with these graphics cards. I actually don't think I've seen a launch in a long time with so much conflicting information and no no information. I'm like, you know what? I actually quite be I'm actually somewhat believing that. I'm actually believing it enough to say I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that that's the case. The specifications and all that, but there's too much conflicting information and I'm not, uh, you know, yeah, it's it, it's very up in the air. With all of that said, hopefully you find these rumours slash breakdown at least somewhat helpful on <laughs> your decision to buy a new card or not. But normal stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.